Hi, how's everybody doing? It's Paul from Magpie 24 7. Back again with a quick drive home review. Of course, the full review uh, will be coming out on the channel just as soon as possible. Uh, but oh my word, what, what a game! What a 90 minutes! What a result! Uh, massive in terms of Champions League qualification, European qualification. You know, Sky give it the massive build up, you know, fourth the fifth, a Champions League shootout, if you will. And Newcastle United, bloody hell, they just did not wait. And I was saying to Carl before the game, you know, we need to start. We haven't been starting games particularly well recently. We need that intensity. Spurs have a fantastic attack in Arsenal. Um, <laughs> probably shouldn't have used that word for them, but you know what I mean. But defensively, if you get at them, if you turn them around, they will give you opportunities. Um, and I was stressing the fact that, you know, it, it has to be a, an intense start. And we needed to see a little bit of um, a response after, you know, definitely the, the worst performance under Eddie Howe's uh, time at Newcastle. Uh, last time out against Aston Villa and boy did we get a fucking response and a half uh, with fantastic goals a great uh, you know brace from uh, from Murphy and the second goal he stood there looking amazed we were all you know in the tent we were all stood absolutely in shock and in awe oh, what a goal there was fantastic goals during this spell. There was world-class passes from um, from Willie Hino. Fucking Nora. Um, Isaac was brilliant. Joel Linton was my uh, player of the of, of the game, man of the match, whatever you want to call it. I thought it was absolutely a ten out of ten faultless display from Joel Linton. He was everywhere. His presence, his physicality. Uh, he was brutal, absolutely brutal with Spurs. Sean Longstaff came in, um, and we saw, you know, what we missed against Aston Villa. No doubt about it. Uh, another great, fantastic performance. Bruno, special, special player. When he was subbed off, the Spurs players were looking at him and just sort of like shaking their head in disbelief at, at what they'd witnessed. And they literally looked on the ropes. If it was a boxing match, that game would have been stopped after, what, a few minutes. Newcastle United raced away. 20 minutes gone and crazy batshit happening all around us. Spurs fans already, to be honest, <laughs> you couldn't blame them heading towards the exits after 20 minutes. They were out of the contest. It was a no contest from, from that point on. And... Um, Newcastle United, they just wanted it so much. It, they wanted it so badly. Everything, every 50 50, you know, every chance to get on the ball, we were desperate to do the business. And um, I just thought we were amazing. Some of the passing was, was great. I touched upon before the Willaquino pass, uh, for, I think it was Isaac's goal. That was amazing. But there was great passing all over the place. There was cross field Hollywood balls getting sprayed everywhere. There was little uh, one twos giving goes. Uh, there was playing the ball in, into space, but then finding the, you know the Newcastle person uh, on the other end of it. There was great crosses getting knocked in, and um, yeah, we were just peppering the goal. We were just shooting from all sorts of ridiculous angles. Everything we touched turned to gold. Everything that they touched, if you think of the Skittles advert, everything they touched just went to absolute ratchet. The couple of half chances they had in the first half were very few, very far uh, between. Hit skyward, well wide. And it was just absolutely embarrassing. You know, if somebody had watched that game and said, you know, are they close competitors? You would have thought that we were playing a relegation team or a team down and out something like that not one full of absolutely top quality uh, you know footballers and stuff unbelievable I'm still in shock now I've, I've waited an hour and a bit before recording this 
uh, but I am still in shock and then even when he got into the second half Harry Kane uh, took it upon himself to get himself his customary goal he does like scoring against Newcastle uh, another game without a clean sheet for the defence um, <coughs> a small area of concern really but then you know we make uh, substitutions we manage the game as best as uh, we can Eddie Howe bringing on players giving them minutes uh, and then two of them combine to you know to get Callum Wilson a goal as well um, and again it was just really really comfortable and you just felt again if, if Newcastle had wanted to they could have upped the levels a couple of more gears worth uh, gone through the motions and scored even uh, more goals but 6-1 against uh, Spurs is amazing it's beyond anybody's wildest uh, you know dreams I think I went in the preview 3-1 I, I thought there would be goals I, I thought there would be a response from Aston Villa I thought that Eddie Howe and Mad Dog and uh, the Gator Guardiola would have been you know expressing the fundamentals which were missing down uh, at Villa Park they were certainly all back plus some in, in this in this game um, I am absolutely amazed that was one of the most enjoyable games uh, to watch uh, from a new, you know Newcastle point of view and the noise I mean we're down in the Gallagher corner um, the singing the war flags the build up the energy the passion the laser sort of focus towards the goal uh, everything was just absolutely fucking perfect absolutely great fans buzzing at the full time whistle uh, and around the stadium you know Newcastle fans singing at the Spurs fans that they're the, you know the fucking shit and the Spurs fans singing about we are fucking shit um, but Spurs just doing what Spurs always do and it's just so satisfying um, to get one over them and in particular to get one over Daniel Levy who was one of um, the most vocal in his protests against our takeover he was dead against it you know a club at what nearly a, a billion pound in debt huge um, you know sums of money to finance that debt the ongoing costs no trophy for so so long you know he didn't want a successful Newcastle United he didn't want a, another player at the top table he didn't want more competition for the Champions League spaces he didn't want more competition in order to be made harder to win, you know, to win a cup competition he was absolutely 100% against anything that would benefit Newcastle United at the end of the day so to get one over him like that is great and it was it was synergy as well because obviously the first game under the new owners uh, was against Tottenham at St James's Park and uh, you know to, to do this against them today it just felt so so special um, but yeah Daniel Levy he gets what he deserves literally looking after you, your own self interest <laughs> you know it's been said time and time again but you know the sleeping giant has been awoken and that is how it feels um, and it's massive 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 advantage now for Newcastle to get certainly into Europe um, and you know one foot in the Champions League places six points clear of Spurs with a game in hand a massive game coming up against um, the Scouts Magnums Everton on Thursday night that will not be an easy game. I make no um, predictions that is going to be a walk in the park and stuff like that. But uh, at the end of the day, they're scrapping for their lives. They're desperate for the points. Uh, but we are desperate to get this job finished. And uh, yeah, dust the passports back off. Some great chance today um, from all sides of St James's Park. A case of whatever will be, will be. We're going to Italy.
<laughs> Tommy Marmy Ma. It was um, it was great. Have you ever seen a Mac in Milan? No, it was just it was just a part of the atmosphere inside St James's Park, and you had to pinch yourselves at certain times. You know, you were jumping up and down, celebrating goals, uh, but at the same time, you like you pinch. You've got to pinch yourself. You know, we've been so used to relegation battles, being starved of investment. You know, everything crumbling and dropping to bits around us, and now. Since the new owners, the new custodians have come in, um, everything is going so, so well. You know, you appreciate the good times more when you've suffered and you've gone through, uh, you know, real hardships. Not the type that the Manchester United fans were on about uh, and that the Athletic article was on about. No, not bullshit, but actual hardship, actual difficult times for the football club people uh, you know falling out of love and people walking away because it was literally just it was just hurting too much uh, and now another full house gets to witness something uh, like that and you just can't wait for next weekend's game again Southampton I watch them against Arsenal it's going to be no uh, okay, no walk in the park you would imagine two difficult games but you've got to think Newcastle United have got uh, every possibility to to defeat Everton and to defeat Southampton and continue this amazing positive energy and positive momentum up the Premier League table. Newcastle United back into third now, obviously with Manchester United playing uh, in the FA Cup semi-final, but obviously it's a Manchester United side with injuries, lost a bit of form, they've lost quite a few players. Uh, you've got Spurs, who are directly beneath us, who are well, bottling it for want of a better word, but literally doing Spurs type things. Um, and then you've got other teams who, again, uncharted waters, different teams, not the usual suspects. You do have Liverpool, who uh, they got a 3 2 victory over down the Forest. They are there or thereabouts. But you'd have to think with the games running out, if we can get victories in the next two games. You know, you're getting closer all the time. You are ticking the games off between now and the end of the season. It is absolutely an unbelievable set of circumstances that not even the most optimistic Newcastle United fan would have thought at the beginning of the season. You know, we were all thinking top 10. Um, I think most of us were sort of thinking, you know, can we try and sneak into a Europa Conference League? Can we get some sort of European qualification? Can we go balls deep in the cup? Um, something like that. Nobody expected us to, you know, to have been up there. And for everybody saying that it's a bad Liverpool team, and you've got Chelsea in eleventh, and it's a bad team. They spent half a billion pound. Liverpool have spent a load of money. Manchester United have spent a load of money. Um, and we've got to a cup final. And we're playing some absolutely fantastic football, and we've got an absolutely, uh, you know, a, a team with some fantastic, you know, really elite level players. You know, such a turnaround in a short period of time. Fourteen years of Mike Ashley, fourteen years of letting the likes of Spurs come from behind us on revenue to well ahead of us, nearly double the revenue that we get in. We've sat back and we've done nothing and we've stagnated and we've run it away. And under 18 months, we've come such a long way in such a short period of time. And it whets the appetite to what can come in the future, what we can achieve in the future and where this football club is, is going. Um, I was asked before we went in today, do you think we're ready for the Champions League? It doesn't matter whether we're ready for the Champions League or not. Keep playing like this, keep getting the results like this, and we will be getting Champions League uh, regardless. And it's then uh, entrusting the custodians of the football club and Eddie Howe and you know and the likes, the scouting network from all over the world to do their business and to get the team ready. You know we've got a fantastic first eleven. We've got some great players. Um, it's just about adding more quality. It's just about continuing to fill out the squad. Um, and to, to be carrying a squad of 25 players who were all capable of giving the performance levels that we need to, in, in order to be in European competition. But there's no doubt that we have got some fucking cracking players, some world-class players, 
some players who the likes of Tottenham could have could have signed quite easily, but turned the noses up on and tried to sign other types of players and name players, uh, and didn't pursue the likes of your Brunos of the world. But yeah, I thought to remind you today, everybody was absolutely fantastic. There was no issues down the left hand side. Uh, Dan Byrne had a really good solid game. They tried to target him. They tried to play the ball from the goalkeeper in between the centre back and the left back. They then switched over to try and uh, do the same trick um, in between the centre back and the right back here and Trippier on the opposite side. They tried all of that, it just didn't work, and everything they did just didn't work in this game. They were forced into making a really early substitution um, because the tactics that they went with just just didn't again didn't work. And um, you've got to think they've got. I think they've got Manchester United next time out. Um, so it certainly doesn't get any easier and they might have Liverpool or something after that they've certainly got uh, another two uh, difficult tricky games in, in this week and how it's how do they respond you know they are nearest competition at the moment in the league um, they're the ones that we're being told that we need to worry about and how do they respond how do they pick themselves up from the absolute annihilation in what's just happened I, I honestly don't know and I honestly don't know how some of their some of the Spurs fans stayed the entire 90 minutes it was x-rated it was ex, you know explicit and you can't say oh, it was particularly all Spurs that were that bad or anything else like that it was the same last week yes there was issues with Newcastle United but Aston Villa were just literally the Played out of their skins, and credit to Aston Villa, for, you know, for that they deserved the points. Today, we didn't let Spurs get the fucking ball, and because we didn't let Spurs get the ball, we played our brand of football. We played our football, and we have got some fantastic footballers in that team. Some were here before the takeover and just didn't know how good they were. Some needed confidence. Some have been brought in since with very astute, clever signings. But we have got some absolutely brilliant, brilliant players. And the team, the work effort, the togetherness, the tactics from the side. Um, Mad Dog at the side. Eddie Howe at the side. Everybody conducting the orchestra um, was fantastic. The substitutions were absolutely mint, nailed on. Uh, and allowed us to try and rest some of our important players ahead of these two absolutely huge uh, games against teams who are fighting for their dear lives. And that's going to be the difficult thing, you know. There's all of our games this season, apart from probably the Chelsea one, is going to be against teams who have got something to prove, who are playing for something. We're not just playing middle of the table ones who are probably already on the beach. Um, we are playing and we are taking on teams who are fighting for European qualification, the league title, to stay in the league, you know, avoid relegation. So it's not going to be uh, easy, but with that team playing that brand of football, the passion from the, you know, the terraces washing down under the pitch, anything, anything is possible. Um, and even the referee wasn't too bad. Yes, he let some fouls go, which I was like scratching my head about. Uh, they were a little bit petulant at times, I felt. But given the situation, given the ass kicking, given everything that was going on, you probably do expect a little bit of that um, back, don't you? I would say. So... <laughs> Oh my word, how they go about picking themselves up, I don't know. Will there be a response against Manchester United? Or will they just literally capitulate and will this season just be an absolute write-off? Where will Spurs end up? Which European qualification, uh, which European system or uh, competition even, will they end up in? Or will it literally be, literally they'll fall through the seat of the pants uh, and just, you know, tumble down the league and, and be hurt? <laughs> be out of any European qualification uh, at all tough knows but from a Newcastle United side everything is looking 
everything is looking great it is so nice to not be looking over your shoulder and to be looking upwards constantly and thinking about the possibilities and being so positive it's great to feel the positivity see the positivity hear the positivity around st james's park it is a special place and special things happened at the cathedral on the hill today there's no doubt a uh, fucking about it like i said uh, towards the beginning of this one there will be a full review coming up on the uh, on the channel just as soon as possible with uh, kyle uh, and or myself so watch out for that one we'll obviously have a chance to uh, dissect and take in a little bit more what's happened we'll have also obviously heard as well from eddie how also so yeah watch out for that video if you haven't already please do subscribe to magpie 24 7 we are trying to push uh you know things on it would mean a lot it doesn't cost anything click on the like hit the subscribe button and help and support magpie 24 7 continue to grow uh as newcastle united are continuing to grow can't wait for next season looks like european football is definitely on the horizon let me know what you thought we were at the game we are inside st james's uh were you watching it on the tv we're on the tv every fucking week aren't we sky absolutely fucking love coming to st james's park bt love it amazon love it everybody loves coming to st james's park unless you're a spurs player or fan <laughs> oh god it was nice it was nice because we haven't had a great record against uh, spurs at st james's recently so nice to get one over them i am in absolutely amazement i want to get myself back get all the other videos uploaded onto the page across facebook across twitter instagram tiktok uh follow magpie 24 7 let me know about uh, your experiences uh, of the match today. Who was your standout players? Uh, was it Joe Linden? It certainly was for myself. I thought he was absolutely um, 100% 10 out of 10. Amazing, amazing performance by uh, Joe Linden uh, today for, for me. Let me know about your player of the match down below. Uh, and then let me know about your thoughts about the Everton game. Of course, we will be back with as well for a preview of that Everton game. That will probably go out on uh, Wednesday. The full review uh, coming out tomorrow. This quick thoughts will come out uh, today. So plenty of content up on Magpie 24-7. Support us. Hit the subscribe. Hit the like. Get the comments down below. And in the meantime, take care. Keep it tuned. I don't think my voice is going to last much longer and I'll speak to you later.